Hello, I'm Richie Scholl from Worthington Distribution. Today, I'd like to take a little bit of time and take you through a really thorough demo of the Fabaro Home Center 2 automation system. And we're going to show you both how the devices interact with each other when connected to Home Center 2, and also how the Home Center 2's user interface reacts with these devices as well. It's a really uh, slick interface, very rich, and has a lot of features for the end user and a lot of uh, ease of use for the dealer as well. So we'll show you through all that. The one thing that we really like about the Fabaro Home Center is that it's kind of on the forefront of those more modern automation systems that we're seeing out there today. At its core, it is a Z-Wave controller, so we can do locks, we can do lighting devices, we can do thermostats. We also have a couple different sensors on the display here, as well as the swipe, which is a uh, gesture control panel. And then we also have a button, which can be used to initiate some scenes and some rules and activities. So that's kind of at the core, but what's really nice with the Home Center 2 is that we can also um, add a lot of third-party systems through IP integration or even cloud integration. So for example, we can add a Rust Sound whole house audio system to the Home Center 2. It's really easy. You go out there and, and grab the plugin for it, and then it's going to go search your network and find that controller. And it gives you pretty much the same level of control of the, um, of the Rust Sound system as the Rust Sound app would, but built right into your Fabaro app. Then we also have uh, the ability to add, for example, a DSC security system. So we can fully integrate security uh, right into the system, and we can use those um, security zones as inputs on our system as well. And then finally, one to point out is that we can also add um, the, the Nest system uh, through the cloud. So you put in your Nest credentials for your Nest account, and that will then pull those devices into your interface just as if they were connected directly to the system. So what that's really nice uh, for you as an installer is that you can really kind of select the devices that you are comfortable with or that you like, or in certain cases, if you have a customer who's really specific about the products they want, for example, like that Nest thermostat is one we run into a lot, it really kind of lets you do that and accommodate those needs. So let's take you through exactly what we've got here. We have a quick set and a Yale lock. Um, either works fine. Uh, there's Z-Wave locks, so we're, we're good with that. And we have a lot of uh, control options through the Home Center 2 for the locks. We have Levitin lighting. The one uh, real important thing to point out about that is, although um, any lighting device would work on the Home Center, any Z-Wave lighting device, the Levitin is nice because it has that instantaneous two-way feedback. So the moment I turn a device on, it sends a signal back to the Home Center 2, which lets us then act on it. So if we wanted to say, you know, when this light is turned on, let's run this activity or run this scene, we can do that. We've got a radio thermostat, uh, Z-Wave thermostat here. Then we start to have some other devices, um, some input devices and some sensors. So with the input devices, the first one we'd like to talk about is the swipe. This is a relatively new product from Fabaro, and it's, um, it's called a gesture controller. So it recognizes uh, movement up, down, left, right, and then also circular patterns. So for each of those six gestures, we can assign different activities. So I have this one set up, and if I were to swipe up in front of it, well, let's come on to a, a dim scene, and then if I were to swipe down, they would go off. Then if we keep an eye on the yell lock here, if we swipe one way, we'll lock the lock. And if we swipe the other way, we'll unlock it. Then in addition, we have the button here. Um, these come in eight different colors. They're battery powered. They come with a uh, sticky on the back. So you can really just put them anywhere, and they recognize one, two, three, and four taps, plus a press and hold. So you have a number of different inputs you can give this that you can tie to different outputs. So what I have it said is that if I do a single tap, it's going to turn on one of my lights. If I single tap it again, it'll turn it off. That's through the toggle command. So whatever the light is in, it's going to move it to the opposite state. Now if I double tap it, it'll turn on a different light for me. Double tap it again, it'll go off. Then I have this one set for if I do a press and hold, you'll see both of my locks are going to lock now. And that's just a scene we have set up with it. So that's kind of uh, the, the, the thing with the button. What's really cool with this is both the swipe and the button are really inexpensive interfaces that you can add to the system, mount them almost anywhere, um, and they just make for a really modern, really cool system. A couple things to point out with the swipe, this is kind of its standard configuration. This just takes a standard photograph. You can pop any, any picture you like to in there. It runs on a, a USB power, so it is plugged into the wall. But it can also take four AA batteries and be completely standalone. In addition to that, we can actually take this apart and take the unit inside that actually recognizes the swipes. And we can mount that under a countertop. So you know, imagine like a kitchen island where you might be working with food and your hands get a little bit messy, but you want to turn some lights up or down or change some music. You can actually make those swipe gestures right over the countertop and it'll recognize them. 
So it's a pretty, pretty neat unit. So to stick with us for a few more minutes here, we're going to kind of get into the interface on the computer screen, and we'll kind of show you how these all tie together. So here's the main screen on the Fabaro Home Center. If we kind of take it from the top, you'll see, first of all, we've got this dashboard going across the top. We'll show you how many lighting devices you have and which ones are on and off, and then kind of some of your other sensors and scenes. Also, if we had a, um, a whole house energy meter hooked up where we're watching the power usage on a, on a utility service coming in, that would show you up there your real-time energy usage. So that's what we have going across the top. And as we kind of come down, we'll see what we call kind of that main navigation ribbon here. And so it's going to bring you by default to your house. And what's nice here is this lets me kind of look at all my devices in a number of different ways. First of all, in the main area here in the, in the center, they are sorted by room. So you see upstairs, and within upstairs I've got office, and then the bedroom. Then you'll see main floor. Within main floor, I have a utility room and a kitchen. These are just the ones I set up. The way this works is you set up uh, these areas first, and then you set up the rooms within the areas. And you can always go back and move them and reorder them and you know, say which uh, room is on which floor and which device is in which room. It's really easy to switch that around. And if we go down by the side, we have these filters where you can say, you know, just show me... Um, my scenes or just show me my my sensors so we can kind of do that and then we can also dig into each room so at this point I'm kind of take you through the the control here each one of these blocks is a separate device so a light switch or a dimmer in this case would show up as one device I can turn it on or off There's both of these here and you can see on the video window it's very quick to respond and then I can also you know, adjust my dimming levels either through the bars or uh, in a more infinite way on the sliders. So we've got that. Door locks, you know, pretty similar. We have a, a lock and an unlock command. You can see the, the lock moving over there, so that's locked now. And then, you know, our scenes and other things show up here. One thing that's kind of important to point out, for example, I'll take the water sensor. That's our flood sensor, and it's going to actually show up as two devices. And the reason for that is a lot of Z-Wave devices, and Fabaro in particular, do more than one function. So in this case, our Fabaro flood sensor detects water, but it also has a temp sensor in it. So if I just stick that in the basement, um, maybe near the hot water heater or, or where the water comes in, where I think I might have a water problem, it's a really nice way to get that really important water information, but I can also get information on the temperature that I can act on. So if the temperature goes below 40 degrees, send me a notification, something like that maybe. The other one to point that out on is the motion sensor. Uh, that actually has three sensors. That's going to be my motion plus temperature, which is over here. And then I've also got a light sensor there, so it'll tell me how bright it is. It's another cool one where you can do things based on uh, how much ambient light is in the room or natural light. You can start to turn lights on or brighten or dim them all automatically if you want to kind of take an approach like that. So we have that. I think at this point we'll take you through some of the other uh, ways the devices show up on the on the screen here. So the first thing I mentioned uh, when we talked about the lighting earlier was that two-way feedback. And I'd like to have you take a look and see how quick that response time really is. So I'm going to turn one of these off, and when you watch the screen, you'll see that update pretty quickly. And we'll do the other one. Okay, and there's your update. So similar situation with the locks. If I were to unlock one of these you'll see that move almost right away. So we have that quick two-way feedback. That's a really nice thing to have on that user interface.
So let's have a look specifically here now at our door window sensor and our motion sensor. You can see them in the interface on your screen. Now if I were to open up the door, so Mike is just going to remove the magnet, you'll see that the icon changes to an open door instead of a closed door, and then we can close it back up. Now, you don't really see anything happening here uh, because we don't have any, anything set up. But watch out for that arm and disarm button, and we'll show you more on that in a moment. So now, I'm actually going to arm that device called front door. And now that it's armed, you can see some different things happen. Now when I open it, you'll see the lights came on. So keep an eye on the phone there. And, and we have a push notification that just came up on the phone to say the front door has been opened. So that's a way through the rule creator that we can say, you know, based on, on, a, on a device being armed or disarmed, what can we do with it? So one thing to point out here is that arm and disarm is really not a security system. I don't want you to think that by doing this, we're going to maybe send a signal to a central station. That's not really what this is for. This is for that homeowner who wants to be notified if something happened, but isn't looking for a full-fledged security system. Now, as we said earlier, if you do want that full security system, go ahead with that DSE panel, integrate it, and we can still get a lot of this functionality tied into the home center. But if, if your customer does not want that, or if that's not a service that you would like to offer, some of the really basic stuff right here is, is very cool, just built into the arm and disarm of the Z-Wave sensor. The next sensor to talk about that with would be the water sensor, and that's this one here. So I've got a bowl with a little bit of water in it, just to show for an example. And if I take this and I set it in the water, so you can probably hear it beeping, so it's in a local alarm, and then here on the phone again, we have that push notification come up. So now to kind of round out the user interface for you, we're back up to the top. And I'd like to show you the rooms area. What's nice here is, as I said, with each device, you assign it to a room. So if you look here, we've got our upstairs, which is sorted into the office and the bedroom, then our main floor, which is sorted into the utility room and the kitchen. So what's really, really nice here is, you know, you can change the icons for each room if you want. We just kind of left them at their default. But if you go in here, you can kind of see this, the three, uh, the bedroom, the utility, and the kitchen, we're already showing temperatures there because each of those rooms have a device in it that's capable of reporting temperature back, and that happens automatically for you. Same thing here in the bedroom. You can see that the door's open because there's a door sensor, and it actually shows the, the open icon. So if we were to go and close that, you'll see now that the, the icon shows closed. Also over here in the office, this is a really important one, I have two lighting devices in this room. But if I click on the light, they all turn on. If I click it again, they all turn off. Really cool thing uh, from a dealer standpoint is without any additional programming, just by you saying these two or three or five or however many light de uh, lighting devices are in one room, you're going to automatically get this functionality in the interface that's going to turn them all on or all off with a single click. So that's another nice thing with it. Now on the left, if I were to go into any one of these rooms, it's going to change my screen. And taking back into that kind of uh, deeper look at what's really in the room. So we've got that layout. So we're going to go back to devices. I'll show you one more thing that we have in there. And we talked about this rust sound. So if I take this and I click on, the, uh, on this expand button, you'll see we get a new window that opens up. So what's really cool with this is you know, right now our rust sound is showing off. We have this hooked up to an XSource device. If I click on that, it's going to turn it on. So now, um, although we don't have any speakers hooked up to it, and you're not going to hear it, we just turn that on, and you'll see it says loading. So right now it's going out to the internet, and it's starting to stream that last source that was played. And that'll pop up in a moment. But we also have our volume control slider. So we can adjust that. And then finally on the bottom here, we have a way to kind of skip to some other stations. Within the Rust Sound streamer, there is a favorites area, and no matter what source you're on, whether it's you know VTuner or TuneIn Radio or Spotify, whatever you add as a favorite will show up here kind of all together. So um, when you save that favorite in the Rust Sound app, it also becomes available to you in Fabaro. So we've got that option. So it's really cool. You've got your your screen out, your album art coming up, your volume control, and your basic transports. Go ahead and turn that back off. We're all set on Russ Sound.